Interstate 695. Yeah. All right, we are talking about I-695. That is the Baltimore Beltway. We are going Baltimore style because the Chiefs are going to the AFC Championship game in Baltimore, Maryland next week. So we can take a look at the route here. 695 is a complete loop. It loops around the entire city of Baltimore and very briefly enters it. So it's similar to 275 in that way and that it enters the main city in a kind of obscure area and that it has some parts that almost look kind of rural. I know this road very well and we've got a lot to talk about today. You're watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel where we talk about highways and the places that they're assigned to go to. If you dig this kind of content, why not give us a like? And if you really like it, why not subscribe? Yeah, subscribe. We've got a Patreon going and we've got all kinds of requests from the Patreon today, which I really appreciate. You can join that. Lots of cool stuff. Thank you so much to those who have. You can also do an exit request for a $5 super sticker. By the time this airs, the next couple of episodes will probably already be in the can. You can make requests for Alaska Highway 1 and 3 and for Puerto Rico 22. All right, let's talk about the inner loop of 695. So we are starting here at Exit 1, Port of Baltimore, Hawkins Point, Exit 1 coming up. Exit 1, of course, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. We see we are at mile marker 49.6, and Exit 1 is a quarter mile away, so mathematically we cannot possibly be to mile marker 1 by the time we get to Exit 1. Here's a reassurance shield west, and they do say inner loop. This is where I got this whole inner loop, outer loop thing was from 695 in Baltimore, because it's always signed that way. We're coming up to a drawbridge, the rarely seen drawbridges on an interstate highway. And you can see we're still at mile 51 here. So here's our look at the drawbridge. We got a stoplight right here on the interstate in case the bridge happens to go up. I've only been on this part a couple of times though. I know this road very well, but this is the section of 695 that I have very rarely traveled. Now we finally get our 0.0, .0 mile marker after exit one. And this is when we are crossing into Anne Arundel County and leaving Baltimore City. This is pretty weird here. So we see our next exit is exit three and coming up after that is exit two. So we go exit one, then three, then two. Kind of strange all over the place, but there is a reason for it if we take a look at the next slide. So if we look at the map here, we see exit three is this long loop around and then exit two is this more narrow loop. So exit three, the actual road does come after the road for exit two. Random interchanges at this point, we are getting West 1695 Baltimore Towson. So that makes sense. We've got a laundry list of exits here, Baltimore Annapolis Boulevard, Baltimore Washington Parkway and 695. So some pretty big roads coming up here and 97 is our next exit. And here coming up is our exit for 97 South Annapolis Bay Bridge. We'll take another look at that coming the other way. And we are now getting 695 West Towson. So we are not getting Baltimore on there. Although I do think Baltimore should be on there after we merge with 97 because Baltimore traffic from 97 would be going that way on 695. We are meeting the BW Parkway here. This exit was requested by the Derp Hog and he wanted to request that because he has a uh, video about this road. So thank you so much for that request. And this is a beautiful road, by the way, the BW Parkway. I really like this road. I'll probably do a video on it maybe when we play the Ravens in a much less meaningful regular season game next year. And here is the actual ramp for South Washington, the primary direction this would be going because the Baltimore section, there's not much more to 295 there. We see this quite a bit on 695, these weird exit signs where you have a horizontal arrow instead of the usual diagonal arrow for an exit. Here we're crossing the Patapsco River. Not much here, huh? Hmm. Right here we're going under 895, but we do not have an exit with 895 because tolls. And here we're getting a sign for BWI Airport is exit 11B, that is southbound on I-95. And here we're meeting Alt US 1 Washington Boulevard and we are shortly meeting 95 for Baltimore and Washington. Here's our actual exit for I-95. So we see Washington South and Baltimore North and we get our laundry list of interstates we're going to be meeting next. We got I-70, I-795 and I-83 and an even number of miles separate them. Pretty cool. On I-95, we get 695 West Towson as the exit. And now we're meeting Edmondson Avenue, which I think was the old routing of US 40 and US 40 National Pike coming up three quarters of a mile. It will intersect with Edmondson Avenue and take Edmondson Avenue into downtown and I-70 two miles away. And here's the exit for Baltimore Pike, the US 40 current alignment. So US 40 for Baltimore and Ellicott City. We have US 40 and I-70 and back-to-back -back exits. What is this, 
Lawrence, Kansas. And here we meet I-70, and this was requested by Real Tony, so I appreciate that. And we've got 695 North Towson signed here. Technically, we don't actually go east on 70, that is unsigned Maryland Highway 570, as I-70 officially now ends at 695, and not at the famous park and ride inside. Now we're getting exit for Security Boulevard. This is where Security Square is. They used to have a really good Korean grocery store that I went to a couple of times when I first came back to the U.S. from Korea years ago. And Pimlico, this exit, I went to the Preakness one time. I probably can't tell that story on a public forum. And now we are going to be meeting 795, the Northwest Expressway, signed for Owings Mills and Reisterstown. And we are now meeting Reisterstown Road. I know this road pretty well, and this was requested by Mr. Shiny, so thank you so much for that request. And yeah, I've gotten off here a couple of times. This is a redesigned interchange, and we'll talk more about that coming the other direction. Here is Park Heights Avenue. This exit was requested by me because this is where I used to get off when I was crashing at my mom's house in Baltimore. We're going to be meeting I-83 soon, so we get Inner Harbor, Camden Yards, Stadiums, and the Maryland Zoo all on this sign for 83 South. And we get our laundry list of exits here, Greenspring Avenue, 83 South, and Falls Road. I've gotten off at all of these exits many a time. And we get another reminder about Camden Yards, Camden Yards Exit 23A. Right next to Camden Yards at the Raven Stadium is where the AFC Championship game will be held soon after this video posts. Here's our actual exit for 83 South Baltimore and 25 Falls Road coming up soon. And now we are on the unique 695-83 concurrency because, kind of like a river that never mixes its water, they are concurrent but also not because the 83 lanes stay on the right and the 695 lanes stay on the left. You can of course freely change between them to change roads. It is kind of interesting how they do that. 83 here signed for Timonium and York. We're signed for Towson and New York. Wow. And we've got York Road next exit for Towson and Lutherville. I did food delivery for Little Isle in Baltimore, so I kind of lived on York Road. A lot of the restaurants I dealt with were there. And now we are meeting Delaney Valley Road for Towson. And this was requested by Corte Manche 437 so thank you so much for that. He requested that on the Patreon. Really appreciate that. And he requested that because he has a friend in Towson, as do I. So, good times. We're getting Providence Road next. That's really the last Towson exit. And then we have our laundry list of exits for roads coming up. Cromwell Bridge, Lock Raven and Perring Parkway. And being that we are beyond Towson, now we are getting on 695 East Essex. Mm, I don't know. We'll talk later. Here's our exit for White Marsh, the large White Marsh Mall, maybe the largest mall in the Baltimore area. Exit here, 695 Beltway. And we are also getting a sign for US 1 Bel Air Road for Overly and Bel Air, one mile away. And this exit, exit 32, was requested by the Derp Hog because he wanted to see that because he took US 1 home from Gettysburg. So thanks so much for that request. Here's a closer look at US 1, the actual exit for northbound US 1 Bel Air Road. And we're getting signage for I-95 coming up again here. After our US-1 exit, we're just getting 695 East Essex, keep left. Kinda weird. Nobody's gonna veer to the right suddenly thinking that ramp is 695, I don't think. And now we've got a helpful sign, helpful for truckers, telling us about the Port of Baltimore. Hawkins Point, use 695, and everyone else, use I-95. And this was requested by c for cat on the Patreon, so thank you so much for that. Cool sign. And we see we are meeting I-95. North New York, South Baltimore. So yeah, the New York thing could be Philly, could be New York, because the split for New York is before you get to Philly, so I understand the rationale for both of them. And we have 895 and 95 out of tunnel restrictions, so they're telling you hazmats should stay on 695 for the key bridge. And here we go, we're getting our big interchange with I-95, and we are on 695 East Essex. Here's a look at the old routing for this interchange. It used to be a really weird and interesting interchange where both carriageways for both roads, but they normalized it and also made it so that express lanes could exit as well. So we no longer have this. It's 2008. That's why it looks so bad. Mr. Shiny wanted to make mention of that as well. And here we are meeting US 40, the Pulaski Highway, signed for Baltimore and Aberdeen. 702 for Essex is coming up soon. And here's more signage for 702, Maryland 702 South Essex, and we are on 695 South for Dundalk and Key Bridge. And Sparrows Point, use 695 also, so we throw Sparrows Point on there as well. So here's our split with 702. It's kind of a weird one because it seems like mainline traffic actually takes 702 and 695 is kind of exiting itself here. 
And once 695 exits itself, we get some kind of weird turns and whatnot. There are some sharp turns in this section of the road. And now we're meeting Eastern Boulevard, West Baltimore. I've been out here once. This is where I came for orientation when I was selling fireworks in a parking lot in Baltimore. So I've had some cool jobs in Baltimore. Beyond here, we're in the section that I've really almost never been to. I think I've only been here once. One time I drove the entirety of 695, the whole loop, just for kicks. Pretty sure that's the only loop road that I've ever driven the entirety of in one go for no real reason. We have an exit for Merritt Boulevard and Dundalk, and we see Sparrows Point will be our next exit. In random interchanges, we are now in 695 South Glen Burnie. And here, like I said, it gets to be kind of a rural road out on this eastern fringe here. There's not much around. The carriageways split by quite a lot. It's only two lanes in each direction. Quite a bit different than what it looks like in the 8370 Southern 95 area. We get another one of these horizontal arrows for Sparrows Point, we see one mile ahead, we get our last exit before the toll. And here is our last exit before the toll. We get toll south 695, easy pass, no cash of course, because you can't pay cash anywhere anywhere. And here we're starting to approach the key bridge and we can see the Port of Baltimore and the bridge in the distance. So pretty cool look. And now we're meeting the Brunning Highway, which actually is Maryland 695. And I think it might be sort of related to this 695, but that goes beyond the scope of this episode. So we're not gonna worry about that. And now we are once again crossing the Patapsco River. So a little bit wider at this point than it is just a couple miles inland where we passed it the other time. And we can also see our toll device set up here as well. Here's a view of downtown Baltimore and the port from the Key Bridge. And here is the section where we actually go into Baltimore City, right under the Key Bridge, which actually was a major plot point in The Wire Season 2 in setting up to prove if this murder happened in Baltimore City or Anne Arundel County, or if it would be the state police or the city police job. Here's a non-zoomed-in picture from the top of the Key Bridge. Great name for the bridge, by the way. I mean, National Anthem written by Francis Scott Key, literally in Baltimore Harbor, right by here. And now we're meeting Exit 1, Hawkins Point, once again, once we get to the other side of the Key Key Bridge, so that means we will turn around and go the other way. All right, let's talk about the outer loop of 695. So at our first exit, we are getting East 695 to Key Bridge. Baltimore City doesn't really sign it too much though. Usually you just get East and West 695 and not any sort of control city when you're in Baltimore City. And here is a look at the Francis Scott Key Bridge as we approach it from the other side. Although this is from the inner loop lane, so you wouldn't want to be approaching it this way. And we looked toward the city going the other way. So we'll look out toward the ocean this way. We can see where the Patapsco River ends up hitting the sea. And here is our toll apparatus, and we're getting signed for the Brunning Highway, Port of Baltimore. We're in the Dundalk kind of area, so now we're getting Beltway North, 695 Essex. But here at the next random interchange, we have not gotten out of Dundalk yet. We have not gotten to Essex, but now we're getting 695 North Towson. So, go figure. And here, we're not getting Glen Burnie. We're getting North Towson and South Sparrows Point. So they're kind of all over the place here. We're meeting US 40 again, West Baltimore and East for Aberdeen. And let's meet I-95 once more, so 695 West Towson at this point, which does make sense to sign it for there. South 695 Baltimore, North 695 New York. On I-95 itself, you get 695 signed for Essex and Towson. And I looked in both directions, it's the same both ways. And we are meeting US-1 again, and this was requested by CGS1982, and he wanted to show 32A South for Overly because that's the way to his aunt's house. So thank you so much for that request. And now we're meeting the Paring Parkway, and this was requested by, again, me. So if you get off of the Paring Parkway, this is what it looks like from the top of the bridge. This is where I sold fireworks in this strip mall kind of right there. I think there was a Kmart. And here's me in action, slinging fireworks from a shipping container. Good times, good times. And now we're getting our exit for Lockraven Boulevard and Cromwell Bridge Road. Best liquor store in the Baltimore area is right at this exit. Also, this was the eastern extent of my food delivery routes. The furthest east I'd ever get off is at Lockraven Road. And we haven't quite made it to Towson yet at Lockraven Road, so we're getting East Essex and West Towson. And here we're meeting Delaney Valley Road once again. This is for Central Towson. York Road also goes to Central Towson. They actually meet together in the circle in downtown Towson. 
On Delaney Valley Road, we are getting East Essex and West Pikesville. I always kind of wondered about Pikesville. I felt like Owings Mills is probably the better way to go. I know that Pikesville is kind of right on 695, but Owings Mills is a little more well known in the Baltimore metro area. It's a little more populated as well. And turning around right there, this is downtown Towson. So we see Towson is kind of more of a built up city than the other suburbs in Baltimore. We're meeting I-83 again. So I-83 north for Timonium and York, PA, and south for Baltimore and Falls Road is the same exit as South 83. So here we see the same sort of divided thing again between 83 traffic and 695 traffic and 83 traffic is going to be leaving to take the JFX to Baltimore. 695 is signed for Pikesville and Washington and Washington is great signage there because if you are coming from 83 North, if you wanted to go to Washington, you wouldn't go all the way back to I-95. You would take 695 to the Southern I-95 junction. And here we're meeting Reisterstown Road once again. This was requested by Nathaniel. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that request. He wanted to request this because he stayed at what he said was an awful motel right on this road at some point, but there was also a great bagel place there, so evens out. And we're getting 795 exit soon as well. On Reisterstown Road, we are getting East 695 for Towson and South for Glen Burnie. That is the common control cities on the western side of 695. And here we're meeting 795 again for Owings Mills and Reisterstown. And if you are coming off of 795, it is the same, Towson and Glen Burnie. Now we're meeting 70 for local traffic, or really no traffic, and west for Frederick. Uh, it should be Pittsburgh. Frederick is sort of suburban, kind of a lame choice for a two-digit interstate. Pittsburgh would be the way to go. And on I-70 itself, we see 695 North New York Towson to North 95 and 695 South to South 95 Baltimore Glen Burnie. So it makes sense to sign it for Baltimore southbound here. And 695 could have overhead Baltimore signs at this point too, but definitely on 70 it makes sense and we get our famous Security Boulevard Park and Ride. And here is Highway 144 Frederick Road for Catonsville. This was requested by Colin the MC, so thank you so much, I appreciate that. And this is his exit for work. And I believe 144 throughout Maryland is also the old alignment of US 40, pretty much, because it does follow US 40 on a smaller road. And now we're meeting Southwestern Boulevard, US 1, and here we go, we meet I-95 again, signed sensibly for Baltimore and Washington. 695 now signed south for Glen Burnie. I think Glen Burnie is good signage there, but you could throw an Annapolis on there too because of I-97. And here is a rare interchange with 895, the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel Thruway. We can only go northbound, we cannot go southbound. You will not be able to get off until you pay the toll on the other side of the tunnel. So you're committed almost all the way to the 95 junction if you go that way. And we are getting the Baltimore Washington Parkway coming Coming up soon too. And here we're meeting the BW Parkway once again, and this was requested by Mo Cowan, so thank you so much for that, I appreciate that. It's signed again for North Baltimore and South Washington, and light rail will be at our next exit, 6A. We're meeting I-97 soon, but also we are meeting 170, 6B, but 6A also kind of works, for Linthicum. Pro tip, I don't know if this works anymore, but back in the day, I used to get off here and park at the North Linthicum light rail stop, and then take that to the airport, because it's only like 10, 15 minutes to the airport from there and you could park for free. So it was awesome. Uh, but I don't know if that is any longer true. And I-97, Annapolis Bay Bridge, one mile. So we see that it's a left exit. That exit was requested by Boss King Inc. on the Patreon. So thank you so much for that. Really appreciate that. And we'll take a look at this exit because it's a weird one. So here is the split. We see 695 on the right and 97 on the left. So it's almost like 97 is the main line thing here and 695 is exiting itself again. And as we continue further down, we see 97 traffic continues at grade and 695 traffic is going to go up onto an overpass. And here we are on 695 crossing 97. So we're on an overpass over 97. Well, 97 traffic would have stayed even the entire time. And now we're meeting the Ritchie Highway, Maryland Highway 2, South for Glen Burnie, exit 3B. That was requested by Dallas Bittinger on the Patreon, so thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. And we see exit 2 is coming up shortly as well. So here is exit 2, and now we're getting east 695 to I-95 Dundalk. If you wanted to go to I-95, your absolute fastest way there would be to get off at this exit and do a U-turn and go the other way on 695. 
And we're approaching the drawbridge, so we cross into Baltimore City once again. And right before we get to the actual drawbridge itself, we get our zero mile marker here, 0.0. .0. And here's a look looking south from the drawbridge. And now we're meeting Hawkins Point Road once again in Baltimore City. Exit one, even though we're at mile marker 49 or 50 at this point. And we see we are now going to be on Toll East 695, and that this is the last exit before the toll. They kindly tell you this. So we have looped back around 695 once more. All right, let's talk about Todd's the way it should be for Interstate 695. I'm going to say the way it should be for 695 for the inner loop is from exit one or so Baltimore, even though you're kind of in Baltimore at that point, but you know, the main part of Baltimore, you'd be going that way to the BW Parkway or 95. Then I would call it Pittsburgh and Towson from 95 or so because Pittsburgh because of I-70 because it shouldn't be Frederick, it should be Pittsburgh. If you can sign New York, you can sign Pittsburgh. Towson, New York, after after the I-70 interchange. And then after meeting 95, I would sign it Dundalk and Key Bridge. Once we are in the Dundalk area, sign it Glen Burnie and Annapolis. Starting from the outer loop, I would sign it Key Bridge, Dundalk. And then once we're in Dundalk, we could sign it Towson. Uh, just straight up Towson. We don't really need Essex. Essex could be ignored on both sides. Owings Mills, Washington from the Towson area after we get to 795. Until we get to 70, it should be Pittsburgh, Washington. After 70, we should change it to Baltimore, Washington until we get to 95. And then from 95, Glen Burnie and Annapolis. All right. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Control City Freak. I enjoyed talking about 695. Good to talk about Baltimore. It's a wonderful city full of wonderful people that I hope will be super sad next week when hopefully the Chiefs beat them to go to the Super Bowl. But Baltimore is an amazing team this year, so I have no idea. I'd also like to thank the Patreons and every subscriber out there. Thank you so much. You guys make this channel work. And thank you for the many requests in a short amount of time on this road. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much, and next week we will be talking about Florida's Turnpike for the Pro Bowl, followed by the Vegas Strip the week after that for the Super Bowl. Until next time, my name is Todd, and keep on trucking.